is moving this whole way. And if your soul's not anchored in Jesus, guess what? You will surely drift away. God bless you. Good morning. This is the High Ground Outreach Church of God in Christ coming to you live and in color all the way from 132 Bank Street in the yeah, beautiful city yeah, of Suffolk, yeah, Virginia. Yeah. And we're here with these men of God. Come on, give these men a great yeah. gift. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're here this morning. Yeah. Amen. And we're singing to the glory of God. Amen. And we're just lifting up the name of Jesus in our locality. Uh, yeah. And we hope that you would enjoy the service on today. We're looking right, for well. the Lord to yes. bless us real good. Mm -hmm. God has been good to us. Yes, he has. And we need to give him the praise. Is there anybody out there that knows what I'm talking about? Oh, yes, Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, and I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burden down. We encourage you to like and to share as we go forth in the service on today, as we try to represent here in this area of these men that we are uplifting men. Last Sunday was Father's Day. Yes, sir. And we are pushing that note, amen. We look for men to stand up and be men and to take their rightful places in the kingdom of God. such a time as this yes, and we encourage them men everywhere to come on and come on let's do all that we can yes, to the glory of God yes. we will be the examples and not the excuses yes. so as we pray and we believe God that he would move on your behalf on this morning as our manner is we start out with prayer and we ask that this time if you will prepare your hearts and mind for prayer and as we make our supplications known unto God, we're going to ask yeah. Elder Michael Eden if he would come and offer prayer for you, those of you that are listening to us through Facebook, and those of you that are on your way um, and to be a part of the service. And yeah. you're welcome to come, even as we are engaged and we're getting in the air. We're on the air, but we're getting in the air. Yes, sir. We believe in that God will have his way even Amen. in our midst. Yes, sir. He's coming to pray at this time, and you join in with him as he comes and pray for you. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, we are yes, again Lord. grateful and thankful for a privilege which thou hast given again to us. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for life, for health, for strength. Thank you, God, for bringing us out. Yes. Thank you for delivering. God, we come again realizing that we need your help. Even so, Lord, today we're here. We're going to make it our complaint yes, even to be thank you for deliverance. Thank you thank for bringing you. us out. Thank you that Jesus yes. paid it all and all to him I owe. Yes. Sin has left a crimson stain, but you washed it white as snow. Yes. God, we come again today and thank you for this day. Thank you for an opportunity. Oh, yes, God, we thank, thank you that when we didn't have anything, God, yes. you yes. paid the ultimate Ooh, price. God, we thank you oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, we have come again and said, God, because you did it all for us. And yes. even, God, when we had nothing and were nothing, you died, oh, my God, for us that we might have life in you. Even so, Lord, yes. today, we come and say, God, we thank you thank in you, the God. name of Jesus. Yes. For your word said, God, that yes, when you, you shall see the travail of his soul. God, today, he had to pay it all. And oh my God, he came, oh God, today. And we encourage him not. Oh my God, he came, oh God, and died for people, oh God, who were nothing, God. We were slaves to sin, God. And the word said, and we esteem him not. Yet, God, when you say you saw the travail of his soul, you will be satisfied. And even though, Lord, today, look at the world today. Oh my God, some, oh God, are dissatisfied. Some, oh God, are complaining. Some won't serve you. Some are disdaining your name. But even so, Lord, today, you say, wide is the gate and broad is the way. Many shall go there or more the other way. But God, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And the few be they can find it. Yet, God, you sit to only be got your son. Know that some will not receive you. Know that some is going to fight against your name. Know that some will never say yes, Lord. But yet, God, you said, when I shall see to, to, the travail of his soul, you will be satisfied. Thank you, dear Lord, today, for love I cannot explain. Thank you for grace that I cannot explain. Yet, God, here we are again, God, today, and even so, Lord, 
you delivered. God, we fell again. We disobeyed again. Oh, my God. But even so, we confess our fault. We confess our sin. Yes, Lord, today, to a better covenant. Yes, Lord, to a better way. And even though, Lord, today, after you brought us out, some had lost the desire to serve. Some had lost the desire to say, yes, Lord. Some had lost the desire to say, all to thee I owe. Yes, Lord. But revive us again in the name of Jesus. And thank you today, God, that Jesus will not die the just for the unjust that we could might live, oh God, because of you. And even now, Lord, today, after you brought us out, you told us in your word, be careful after the Lord had made you rich. Lord, you told us, oh God, don't be lifted up in pride. But some of us, God, have been made rich, oh God, in your goodness, in your mercy, through jobs, and oh God, through favor, through help and strength. But we lost our yes, Lord, pray. We lost our desire to lift our hands. We lost our desire Oh, my God, to clap our hands. Yes, Lord. And even now, Lord, forgive us again. Wash us again. In the name of Jesus. Some, God, have not turned, God. Some have made excuses, God. But, oh, my God, again, you still sought to travail of his soul. He went through it all. Over all the pain, all the hurt, all the misery. That we could go about live because of you. And even now, Lord, today, look at the church. Oh, my God, today. Yes, Lord, today. Sometimes, God, we're slack. Sometimes we're cold. Sometimes, oh, God, there, we feel a different way. But, oh, my God, again. Hallelujah. Bless us again. Yes, Lord. In the last and even day, God, help us to seek your faith. And even though, God, today, you gave us the bed, you sent the Holy Ghost, God. And even now, God, we need him, God, but we don't go after him. Help us again that we have a thirst and hunger after righteousness. In the name of Jesus, something our love, God, has too long. Lord, revive us again and renew us again. In the name of Jesus, oh, my God, today, when there was no hope, you became our hope. Even now, Lord, help us again in the name of Jesus. And oh God, today, when he cried on the cross, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? You had to cry, but he delivered the birth pain. Oh God, there was no one, oh God, today to help, oh God, bring the church into the world. Yet you did it all. You paid it all. And we might have it all. And yet, God, today, we're unthankful. We're ungrateful, God. Today, we have come, oh God, and we don't want to worship you, God. We don't want to bless your name. Yes, yes Lord, but help us again. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Again. Restore again. Renew again. Revive again. Someone, oh God, today has become discouraged. Yes, Lord, because of the way. In the name of Jesus. But help us to bless the Lord at all. Time. Look where you brought us from. Look at the things you went through, God, that we will have these abundant blessings. Oh, my God. Help us. You sent a word to us, oh God. The just shall live by his faith. Yes, you've been good. Yes, you brought us out. In spite of all of this things, God, that we've been through, God, I still got a mind to do right. Yes, Lord, I still got a mind to live right. I still got a mind to walk right. In the name of Jesus. Help us again, God, that we be the example that you're calling for. Help us again, God, that we don't call no one to fall, no one to become discouraged. Yes, Lord, today, have your way again. Thank you, God, for this day. Even now, Lord, today, restore us again, renew us again. We pray, God, oh God, for the sick and the afflicted. We pray, God, for the bereaved family. Yes, Lord, that if we will reach out by faith, Oh, my God, reach out and touch the Lord. Yes, because he ever so not. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Mother Boone. We pray for Mother Parker. We pray for Mother Jefferson. We pray for the Marine everywhere. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. forget. Oh my God, the day that we were slaves in sin, the day that God, we were on our way to a burning hell, but God and but great. Oh my God, you turned our pathway around and you delivered God and you made me whole. And in whom the Son has made free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. Lord, 
so careful to give you the praise, so the glory, and all the honor so they belong unto thee. Be yeah. Our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank Amen. God. Amen. 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 A scripture reading from the book of Philippians, the reading in chapter 3, two verses. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, yes. forgetting those things which are behind, yes. reaching forth unto those things which are before, yes. I press toward the mark yes. for the prize of the high calling call of God, yes. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. 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 Yes.
These men are representing God. Bless them, each and every one of them. God bless you. Love you, brother. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you this morning. Amen. So it's not just the ladies, but we got brothers as well. And we help us one or another. So continue to encourage these men. And you'd be surprised if you encourage a man, he can do a whole lot of stuff. Yes, sir. Just let him tell him how wonderful he is, how great and good a job he's doing. He may not be doing very much, but if you tell him he's doing good, you better watch out. He's going to say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to say, I'm going to do better, Lord. So I praise God for it. Ask that you with those of you that are contributing to us and our broadcast, continue to do that through our Giveify method uh, with the Giveify app. You can go right to your phone and just give right on the Giveify app. And that is the Higher Ground Outreach Church of God in Christ. And that is 132 Bank Street in the city of Southern Virginia. We appreciate each and every gift whether large or small that you give to yeah, this ministry. Yeah. It does take that type of M, which means money, yes. plus members that will equal the ministry that we yes, have sir. to perform. Yes, right. So we appreciate that. And those of you that are going to give through the CAFS app application, you may do that as well. Uh, that is a dollar sign to CCEFC. And those call numbers again, is a dollar sign CCEFC. Yes. And those of you that have our app, we ask that you would on, just go to the Google Play and you can load it right now. You will see us live and in color, even as we're going forth in the service oh on God. our app. And yeah. that is Higher Ground Outreach, right on your Android or right on your uh, iPad or iPhone. And come right up and you just tap into the live services, live stream through Facebook on this yes. morning. Yes. We'll be doing it through YouTube as well. Yes. So that all of you may have an opportunity to view the service. Now, we yes. understand that a lot of people are yet shut in, but we don't want you to feel shut out. Right. So we love you we do and pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. We thank God for our mothers that are here on today, Mother Jefferson, Mother Williams, and all of these mothers that are here today. We thank God for them as we celebrate what the Lord is doing in our midst. And as we continue to encourage you to be a part of the service, come on out on our Tuesday night service. We do have a Tuesday night service here at the church, and that service yes. begins at 7.30 uh, p.m. You can tap right into our web page or even our app now that is up and running. Go right to our app and just a Tuesday night into a prayer service. You can go right directly into the service and be a part of it on our Zoom application. Yes. And we ask also that you will be a part of our conference call out Tuesday, noonday prayer. Yes. So prayer is want to be made, especially yes. in this day yes. that we live. We yes. need to pray. Yes. Look at somebody and say, we need to pray. We need to pray. So many decisions are being made and we yes. have to take yes. a stand yes. at this day and this last yes. time because Jesus is soon to come. Yes. I don't know yes. how much I can yes. emphasize the fact that he's soon to come. We really do not have time to pick wildflowers by the wayside. He could come any day. Yeah. But we just want you to be ready. We're helping prepare the saints to help the Lord soon return. Uh -huh. That also we have on Friday night, which is our Friday night services, uh, or Friday night prayer on the noonday hour. At the 12 noon hour, you can do the same with your app or with your website, www.hgocogic. Mm -hmm. Amen. We appreciate each and every one of you. And we are a equal opportunity, yeah. opportunity employer. We won't turn anybody away to come and join in. You're welcome to come. And we extend the welcome mat to all of our friends and loved ones all over this country. Those that tune in and listen to us on a daily basis. We appreciate your prayers. Keep us in your prayers. We're trying to do the work for the Lord here in this part of God's vineyard. Amen? Amen. So do that. And we certainly, well, God will certainly bless your heart and mind for so doing. Uh, this month, of course, has been a tremendous month yeah. of graduations, amen, yeah. and celebrations, yeah. amen, we've got some birthdays and weddings and a whole bunch of stuff yeah. going on in the month.
month of June, we yet extend our congratulatory note to Dr. Monisha Bynum. <laughs> Amen. Is there a doctor in the house? We got several. We got several. Amen. But we got another addition to the family that the God bless her for her accomplishment yes, and her sir. dedication to graduate and to see this thing through the end. Amen. The Lord blessed us to be able to celebrate along with us and we yet congratulate her and the effort that she put forth to complete the goal that she set forth for herself to do. Come on, let's give her a great little blessing. Amen. I thought about the Amen. But she has definitely did the job, and I thank God for her. And thank God for all of those that have graduated this month. We didn't actually have a graduation ceremony uh, for the church, but we congratulate those persons that graduated from high school and those that graduated from college. We may not have everybody's name in place, but let's congratulate all of our graduates. Amen. Son graduated and went to another level. We're praying for him and praying for all of you, of your children that have graduated or matriculated yeah. uh, through this educational system. I ask that you continue to encourage them to keep on keeping on, yeah. and the Lord will bless them for so doing. Thank God for our June birthday month, Woo! people. Amen. amen. We do celebrate and we do to acknowledge our June babies. And we started this month out, and this month is almost gone. Yeah. But we congratulate Sister um, uh, Sherelle. Eaton on the 13th Amen. of this month. Amen. Amen. truly on the 14th Amen. of this month. Amen. And my daughter as well, Pamela Bennett, and also Sister Destiny Jefferson on the 18th. Amen. Good to see you today. And Brother Trenton Holloman on the 20th. Amen. And Brother Jaquim Rogers on the 23rd. Come on. for so doing and that yeah. you will continue in prayer at this month. We are looking going into the month of celebration in July, mm -hmm. our Independence Day celebration. We'll be giving you further details concerning that as well. But we encourage you to continue to pay your tithe and give your offering. Yeah. This is yeah. something that we do because it's right to do. Yeah. And we don't have to browbeat you or beat you over the head, but we yeah. appreciate those persons that have contributed uh, thus far and we ask that you will continue to let the Lord lead you yeah. and let him bless you for so My doing. Goodness. God has been good to us. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness to know that God has been good. He's been mighty, mighty good to us. Amen. Thank God. So I don't want to keep this brother standing too long there. He'll represent us on today. And I appreciate each and every one of them. Yes, this is not all, but this is a portion of our group of men that the Lord has blessed us with. And believe me, brothers, I'm constantly we're praying for you that the Lord will use you in such a time as this. Because uh, has there ever been a time that men need to stand up yes. and be counted, yes. it is right now. Yes. We can no longer afford the luxury of hiding behind the skirt tails, yes. coattails of our female constituents. Uh -huh. We got to lead the way. Yes. That's what men do. Men lead. Yes. So we're setting out as an example of the leadership that God has blessed us with in this last and crucial hour. Yes. Ask that you continue to pray for us. I'm going to share with you a few moments uh, from the word of the Lord. I'm All already right. on about two hours sleep. Amen. But that's what soldiers do. We, we get up and we do what we got to do. Uh, but we praise God that he brought us through. And I thank God for the opportunity to share with you on this morning. I ask that you would bow your heads. And before they sit down, y'all hold, hold right where y'all stand fast, as they say in the military. We're going to let you go in a few moments. But bow your heads and humble your heart. Father, we bless you and we thank you today, God, for this privilege, for this opportunity. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost yes, that rests upon us and that moves within our lives. Yes. God, we agree with you this morning oh that you're right, that we are, we're the one that are called by your name. Yes. Bless us today, God. Make us a blessing yes. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you for what you've done. We give you praise and we give you glory and we give you the honor. Hallelujah. Have your way today. Save somebody, deliver somebody, yeah. set somebody free. And yeah. God will bless you. We'll praise you for so doing. Yeah. When you yeah. be the adversary of our soul, yeah. give us the strength that we need yeah. to go through and to endure oh, yeah. hardness, even as a good soldier yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Bless us now. Use us for such a time as this. Yeah. And God will be so thankful and so yeah. grateful yeah. to yeah. give your name the praise. Yeah. These and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And we thank you for the way you that you made and the doors that you opened. Yes. In Jesus' name we Jesus pray. Name. Glory to God. Let's tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Y'all have to say this real quickly. Yes, sir. You made a way. Come on, brother. Y'all yes. When our backs were against the wall. 
so glad that I have included him and I have agreed with God. Yes, sir. All that he said who he is. He said, I am your Jehovah Rapha. He had proved himself and he is my healer. He is my deliverer. He had proven himself time and time again. He pulled down mountains. He called walls upon him. with his power. He performed the miracle that was needed in many of our lives. And we honor him on this morning. Thank God for all of these ministry brothers and sisters. Amen. And we are going to bless you and bless you. And all of our brothers that are here today. Amen. And these young people that are gathered here on today. We want to know and to reiterate the fact that God is still 
in control. Yes. He is still sovereign. He knows exactly yes. what he's doing. Yes. He is yet healing. Thank God for touching the bodies of those of you that have been afflicted in these yes. last few weeks and months. God is still in the healing business. Yes. And we want to give him praise. I want to share with you for the next few moments, and don't y'all make me work too hard today. Amen. I'm, I got a little bit of energy, but I don't know if I'll be able to run down the aisle. Brought the tea. I'm going to try to do what I can today. I, won't, right. I probably won't raise and put my hand behind my ear this morning, but I want to try to share with you and to break the bread of life to you yes, to encourage your heart uh, what the Lord is doing in our midst. Uh -huh. And as a topic of discussion, I want to begin uh, speaking with you uh, concerning making preparations for the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Can y'all help me say making Making preparation, preparation for, for the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Amen. And I think that there has to be a process of pre preparing oneself to ex whatever it is that we are expecting. And most have most people have expectations, but oftentimes these expectations there is no preparation, or they are not preparing for what it is that they are expecting. I've been noticing a trend, and I say, God, help us to live at the level that we are expecting you to operate and we are operating in, mm -hmm. that we can move forward in this last day. Mm -hmm. Expectation minus preparation equals frustration. Uh -huh. All right, Pastor. Can y'all help me say that? <laughs> Expectation <laughs> minus <laughs> preparation <laughs> equals frustration when things do not turn out oh as God. we had planned. All right, work on it, work on so it. So I, I put that into my psychic. I said, Lord, if I'm expecting something, then there is a human element. And I heard you, Bishop Thomas, speaking in my mind this morning. Uh -huh. Even in the Sunday school, there is always a human element that's involved in whatever it is that we need from God. All right. right. God is not going to do everything for us. Uh -huh. There are some things that you and I have to do as brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. God does for us only what? We cannot do for ourselves. I'm putting that so expectation. Y'all write this down somewhere. Uh -huh. Minus right. preparation equals zero or frustration. Mm -hmm. And many of people are frustrated today because what they were expecting did not quite turn out as they had planned. Amen. But if you do the math and if you look at their situation, what preparation has been made for your expectation? And I'm convinced that this is where a lot of God's people find themselves on this morning. Mm -hmm. So how does uh, this compare to the born again relationship with Jesus Christ our Lord and his expected return? Are we preparing for Jesus' return? Mm -hmm. Are we making preparations? Are we getting our houses as they say in order? Jesus could come today mm -hmm. and we need to make sure that we're ready to go back with him. There may be a large percentage of us that are not ready to meet him because we have not properly prepared. And I say this because we have been almost lulled into a sleep or of just uh, uh, complacency even after the pandemic. Wow. I would have thought that we would be more energized, more activated now that God blessed us to be able to survive it all. Yeah. But yet and still there would seem to be a lack, a daisy oh, attitude God. when it comes to pushing forward or yet preparing for Jesus' return. Are you prepared and are you ready for Jesus' return? Will you be ready to answer the call as the song goes? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If an angel were to call you in the judgment right now, will you be ready to answer the call? Mm -hmm. Let me say this about preparation. Preparation is an action or the process of making something ready for use or service or getting ready for some occasion, some test, mm -hmm. or some duty. Mm -hmm. That's how we prepare. They teach this in the military. You have to prepare. Preparation is a necessary process that has to take place. Mm -hmm. You know, that just doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And to take the, even a lot, little further, the Bible is loaded with examples of how God allowed a period of time to pass in order to give his people a chance to make preparations to be ready for what was coming. Right. And I heard the Bible talking to me in the book of Amos and the fourth chapter, verse, verse. And it says, therefore, thus I will do unto thee, O Israel, in the 12th verse. And because I will do this unto thee, what does the Bible says? Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. 
And we've been talking from that premise in a few moments, but this declaration by the prophet uh, to God's people after numerous attempts and numerous reminders to them to prepare themselves and to return unto God or else face the wrath and the judgment of God. That was Amos's job. It was the hard job. So, so it was Amos's job, whose name means burden bearer. And what a task to be somebody else, burden bearer. That's what his name meant, to deliver God's message to the northern kingdom of Israel. It, and I read in a few moments of the repeated warnings, and yet, as that latter portion of their phrases will read, and yet, have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. That was God's indictment to the northern kingdom after all of the repeated warnings mm -hmm. that Amos delivered unto them. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reading about that in a few moments. But before I go there, let me share with you and talk a little bit about pre pre preparations and expectations. In relationship matters, much has been said about the potential of spouses, whether it be husbands or wives, Y'all say amen. 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 Social media and these so-called dating apps amen. have gained much popularity in these times. Right. Yes. People are looking for certain qualities and certain characteristics when it comes down to choosing a mate. Yeah. And they have the opportunity to ask the right kind of questions yeah. and what they expect from a potential partner, don't they? Yeah. Won't go into Tinder and all of these other apps. I don't do them. I don't use them. But for those that are on, God bless you. you do what you do. Amen. Amen. That they have the opportunity to ask the question. They have the opportunity to ask the right kind of question of what they expect. Uh -huh. Single men want to know. Are you wifey material? <laughs> don't they? Yeah. And y'all know what that means, though, don't you? Yeah. I'll just give you a few clues. Or, or will you make a good wife for me once we tie the knot? And same holds true for single looking to be married men. Mm -hmm. Will you make a good husband or a good father to my children? Mm -hmm. Most of these people have high expectations mm -hmm. for what it is that they want. But are you preparing to be a wife or a husband mm -hmm. for someone who is looking just for that kind of relationship? Mm -hmm. What are you bringing to the table? We talking about preparations, right? right. Y'all getting real quiet on me. Y'all think I'm gonna say something wrong? I'm go. I'm, 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 I'm in the book. <laughs> what are you bringing to the table, so to speak, in this kind of relation? Can you cook? That's right. Do you keep the house clean? What are your personal hygiene habits? Are you a clean person? Amen. Because if you're a clean person, I'm a dirty person, there is going to be a problem. And we don't really need to tie the knot if you don't get those things straight. Y'all want to give me this moment. Do you have a job? Ask those types of questions. How good is your credit? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you prepared yourself? Don't go into the marriage relationship but overly indebted because now you got a problem. Yes. Because if your finances is jacked up, then your romance is gonna have problems. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about preparations. Uh -huh. yes, Work on. Do you take care of your obligations in a timely manner? Mm -hmm. Right. Tell somebody you have to ask the right kind of question before you go hook up with somebody because they look good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And there are a whole lot of good-looking men and women out there. Yes, God knows, sir. Amen. But will they make good white material? Will they make good? Y'all don't hear me this way. Yeah. Will they make good husband material? Right. And some people are just thirsty. Is that the word? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 But you have to prepare. I'm not tickling myself, but you have to prepare for a relationship. It just doesn't happen in like an overnight sensation. You have to prepare for it. Yeah. We used to say this. Move in the direction of your prayer. Uh -huh. yeah. If you're looking for a job, get out there and beat the paper. Oh, yeah. right. It's not going to fall out of the sky. Right. If you're looking to be married, and for those persons that were seeking, because you can be happily single, single, saved, and satisfied. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There are a lot of people that are single, saved, and satisfied. Right. 
and are not looking for a relationship. So those that are looking for a relationship, make sure you ask the right, you got to prepare. Look at somebody tell them you got to prepare. You just, you just got to prepare. So it is when, when it comes down to what God expects of us as born again believers at how we prepare ourselves for his return. We cannot take this thing lightly. Jesus is coming soon. So, and, and I, I look at the Bible, uh, Pastor Richard, I was looking at the Bible, but speaking about preparations, I'm reminded of the story of Esther. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Hadasha, a young Jewish girl that God used to deliver his people from destruction during the Medo-Persian era. God raised her up. Can I talk about Esther for a few moments? Because sometimes people think it's a shame to be a virgin. Now it's something that's shunned upon. But God called this young woman in the book of Esther. And how did she get to in a such a position as this? By preparation. And I'm going to talk about it. Let's turn to the book of Esther first and foremost before I get into the meat of what I want to really talk about today. In the book of Esther. Even in the book of Esther, where the name of God is not mentioned, God is all up in there. Yes, sir. Working. We see the preparation that took place for Esther to get in the position to be uh -huh. the deliverer of her people. Yeah. In that third chapter, is it the second chapter, it talks about what she went through and she won the beauty contest. That's right. All right. Yes, but right. she didn't just jump up there because she looked good and she was fair to look upon. There was some 12 months of preparation. Yes, yes sir. Here. A purification that took place. And I, I took this out of that this morning as I was reading earlier this morning. I said she won the beauty contest, but she just didn't win it because she was fair to look upon. She prepared herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was running for the queenship mm -hmm. of King Ahasuerus mm -hmm. because his former queen, Bastet, yeah. got fired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 12 in that same second chapter. And let me read verse 3. Let me read, let me read verse 9. And the maiden pleased him, talking about Esther, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purifications, with such things as belongeth to her, and seven young ladies uh -huh. to help her to get more beautiful, which were meant to be given her. Whatever she asked for, she got Yes. Out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Let me read a little further because I'm trying to talk about preparation. And as I get down to verse 12, of course, she had a good old uncle named Mordecai yes, that was on top of things. He was watching everything. Yes, he, was. he went to check on her every day. How are you coming along, Esther? Don't tell him that you're a Jew yet because if you tell him that, you're going to blow the whole couple. Uh -huh. yeah. Because the beauty spoke well for her. It got her into a position, but she prepared herself. Look how she prepared herself. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go to King, into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of her purification accomplished. To wit, six months with the oil of myrrh. That's a long time to put to them. They get beautiful. Six months to wit with the oil of myrrh. And six months with sweet odors. Perfume. I can just imagine in my mind's eye, she bathed herself in the oils of the perfume so that she could smell wonderful. So that she would be pleasant to the smell and to the sight of the upcoming job that she was running for, for her queenship. Yeah. Six months with other things for the purifying of the women. I can imagine mm -hmm. that she used the eyeliner and the, I don't know if she had these eyelashes to take out now. That's another whole issue. Y'all don't get in trouble. I start messing with that. But I can just imagine, brother, that she was beautiful to look upon. But she prepared herself a whole year. Didn't just jump up there because she was nice looking. Uh -huh. But when the opportunity presented herself, she was selected. And the king looked down in verse 7, and the king loved Esther yes, sir. above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight right. more than all the virgins. Mm -hmm. So that he set the royal crown 
upon her gate. The first beauty contest was won by Esther. Yes. But guess what she did? She prepared herself. Yes. So what does that teach us about preparation? It's going to take some time to prepare what it is that you're looking for. She could very easily say, I don't need to go through all that. I'm already beautiful. Mm -hmm. But she said, just to make myself even more attractive, even more becoming, and even more desired, I'm going to go through 12 months of purifying myself. Oh my God. I'm going to eat the right kind of food. Yes. I'm going to put the right kind of stuff on my body, the right kind of oil. Y'all won't hear me this morning. Mm -hmm. Right kind of oil, the right kind of stuff. 12 months with things for purification. Yes. She was gunning for the job. Yes, sir. But she had to prepare herself. And look what she said. Six months with oil of her and six months of sweet odors and with other things for the fear of fine. Tell somebody, whatever you're expecting, whatever you're expecting prepare for it. Prepare for it. That's a lesson for me. I'm looking to go somewhere and do some things, but I've got to prepare for the time comes before it comes. Prayer is good. Yes. But there is always a human element. I'm still right. talking about that. Yes. And whatever we get from God. Yes. And it requires faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is an action word. Yes. And even as we spoke in this morning concerning the grace of God. God extends grace toward man. He's given us an opportunity now to get it right. We've experienced a lot of things these last few months and years. Yes. But that's the grace of God that we're still here. I think a hand clap out of go right now. Yes. We're still here by the grace of God. So now that I'm still here, and this is what I, this is my mantra after God had brought me through my traumatic experience, Mother Jefferson, I said that whatever it is that they're telling me I need to do from this point on, not to have a relapse and have a reoccurrence, I need to do it. Amen. So what I've been trying to do, amen, I've been trying to eat right. I've been trying to take my vitamins that they sent me home with, and ever since I did come home, I still kept up that regimen, and guess what? I ain't had no more problems. Because I'm preparing, I'm preparing, I'm preparing to, eat, to live healthy the rest of my life. I don't want to be a broke down man. Y'all won't hear me this morning. So I, I got to prepare for it. I got to do the necessary things. I don't have to oil myself down. I don't have to get the sweet odor because I'm not a woman. But I do have to stay physically yes. fit enough so I can be effective in this last day. Yes. So we got to take these things into action. You want a job? You got to, what are you preparing yourself for? Uh, if you want to uh, do, be elevated on your job, are you going to school? Are you taking the courses that you put on, you put you on a platform to be when the opportunity knocks, you'll be able to answer. Are you preparing yourself? Don't talk about they just overlooking me, that they're not paying me in the mind. But prepare yourself, put your qualifications in order that you cannot be denied with the favor of God. Don't give me this morning. Help me say preparation. Expecting God, expecting our expectations minus preparation equals what? Frustration. So we really can't blame God when things don't turn out if we haven't necessarily prepared ourselves. All right, all right. I can go down through the list and, uh, and we'll end up like these five foolish verses. Y'all right. know what Jesus talked about it as well. Oh, yeah. In the parable, in the 25th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, he talks about some birds that were five that were foolish and five that were wise. Uh -huh. But there was some preparation that took place even doing that particular parable. Yes, they were not ready when the bridegroom came because they did not trim their lamps. And their lamps went out. My God. How many of us have allowed during this pandemic our lights to go out? Mm. Hallelujah. Don't let your light go out. But you've got to prepare because behold, the bridegroom just might come. Because uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. you don't know when the day or the hour uh -huh. that the bridegroom coming. Yes. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So therefore you got to watch. And because you know not the day. Yes. We used to sing a song. Yes. What it says? Watch. Watching. Therefore you know not the day. Uh -huh. When the Lord shall call your soul away. But it was punishment to us to watch, therefore, 
anymore. We don't have time to pick wild flowers about the wayside because just like these five foolish virgins, they had the opportunity to go back with the bridegroom, but they let their lights mm. go out. Wow. Tell somebody, don't let your light go out. Don't let your light go out. So now let me go back to my scripture text in the book of Amos. Uh -huh. That's sermon number one. Let me go back to sermon number one. Okay. Hallelujah. We're going back to the book of Amos. Uh -huh. Amos, the burden bearer. He has been tasked with a job to speak into the children of Israel. Look what he said in that, in that fourth chapter in the book of Amos. I won't read it in its entirety. It talks about the judgment uh, that was deserved by the past mishaps of the children of Israel. Look what he said. He says, says Amos says, therefore, and we know what the rule of the therefore is, don't we? Mm -hmm. We got to read and find out what it's there for. Mm -hmm. That's right. Y'all with me? Amen. That's the rule of the therefore. This is why we got to find out. what. Why did God pronounce judgment on Israel? All right. When he said in that third 12 days, therefore, thus will I do unto you, because I will do this thing unto you, prepare to meet your God. Look at verse 6. And I just want to read these six verses, if y'all allow me time right. to do it. Go ahead. It says, and I also have given you cleanness of teeth. I'm reading the King James Version mm -hmm. and all of your cities. Meaning there was a famine. When you got clean teeth, that means you're not eating anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? <laughs> and want of bread in all your places. Yet, and I want y'all to underline this. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. God said, I let the famine come. Mm -hmm. And I let you experience want. And want of bread. And want of beef. And cleanness of teeth. And yet. You still refuse to come back to me. Oh my God. That's the first yet ye have not returned mm -hmm. unto me. And also I have withholden the rain from you. Verse 7. There were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. Mm -hmm. One place was rained upon, and the place peace whereon it rained not withered. Mm -hmm. And verse 8, so two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet ye have not returned unto me. God said, I'll let this happen for a reason. There are consequences to all of our actions. And because you have refused my admonishment, you refused the word of the prophet that came to you day and night. You refused to acknowledge the fact that God just might be in the pandemic. Yet you have not returned unto me. I have smitten you with blastings and mildew and when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase the palm of them devoured them. God said you had, you grew much but it didn't survive the harvest. Look what it says. Yet have you not returned. Don't you see God working in this situation that we've been dealing with now. Yes, sir. And I have sent among you the pestilence. After the man of Egypt, your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses and I have made the stink of your calves to come up in your nostrils. Mm. Yes. And what does it say? Yes. 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 You still stiff neck and hard head. I'm, this is God talking to his people now. Yes. This is God's indictment to yes. the northern kingdom of Israel. Yeah, They've done yeah. all of these things. Y'all know that was the two remaining tribes after the division of the kingdom. These right. two remaining tribes that was left in the northern kingdom with Judah down in the south with the ten other tribes. But this hardhead group right here, God said, I still love you and I let all these things happen, but yet you still have not returned. Glory. Hallelujah. Verse 11, I have overthrown some of you in as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet. Y'all yeah. get real quiet on me. Yes, sir. We hear you. Yeah. Yet yeah. have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So God said, therefore, mm -hmm. because you have rejected me, because you have re refused to acknowledge the consequences that came with you, just might be connected to me, trying to drive you back to me. Therefore, this is what I'm going to do. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Saints, we've got to prepare. From the pandemic and other crises we have faced in the past few years. But 
you know that what? You would think that all of this people would be turning to God in record numbers. And I know that there are yet people being saved and yet people being delivered. But on the whole, when I look at Christendom from an overall standpoint, there are many people that have relaxed their standards. Yes, sir. And says, I'm, you know, God didn't kill me then. It's almost like the Garden of Eden experience that uh, that Cain and Abel experienced, or that Adam and Eve. They didn't die that day, but they was in a constant process mm -hmm. of dying. Yes, and the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. And when they did die that day, they thought they had got away. Yes, right. mm -hmm. They thought they was in the clear. Mm -hmm. How many people now think that same? Now that we've survived this, we, what else can come? The high price is in the gas pump. We look at these things. Yes. We say it's pain at the pump. I got robbed, and I can I see the culprit. It's yes. pump number seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yet, it doesn't get our attention enough. Amen. I see the crisis. I see the decisions that's being made in the Supreme Court. I see that happen in the judicial system. I see what's happening politically here in America, not just talking about the world, but even the wars and things that are going on, but yet yes. doesn't bother us, doesn't get our attention enough. But when you see these things, know ye that the time is not yet, but the end is near. Amen. And I can say from a prophetic standpoint that the time is not as long as it has been. Amen. But are you preparing to meet your God? Are you living in an expectation? Have you done the necessary preparations in order to get your life right with God? And that's my point on today. Many of you that are listening to me right now, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. Amen. I don't think I can put it any more plainly than that. If you're not delivered, if you're still struggling with issues and habits, suppose Jesus was a come. Yes, yes, yes. Will you be ready to answer the call? Have you been faithful to Jesus at all? If an angel called you into judgment right now, would you be ready to answer the call? I got I heard that in my spirit this morning. Those are the songs that were reminded us that we need to be ready to answer the call. It's good God has blessed us, hasn't he? Amen. He has truly, truly blessed us. But are we ready to answer the call? He spared us. Or will we be like this hard-headed group of Israelites that say, yet ye have not returned? Us? What else can God do that he has not already done? What else can he allow? And I won't say that he did it for that particular purpose, but I'm saying what else can happen that would get our attention like he has it now? On a whole, this has affected not just people that are not saved, but it has affected the unsaved as well. Amen. And y'all know we're not exempt from these types of things happening because we live in this society. Amen. We live in this world. So now it's time to get it right. But, you know, as I mentioned this morning, there is something about grace. Yeah. It is not, if it's not applied properly, it can make, it give us a wrong attitude. Yes. It would make us lazy. They feel that they can do and anything because Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did for our salvation. Yes, salvation. But it does not relieve us of our obligation to apply our works with our right. faith. Because I heard the Bible says faith without works is Dead. This is going to be my last preparation. Let's look at the James, the book of James, and I'm going to be finished in a few moments. I hope y'all hear me this morning. Yes, didn't feel like hollering, but I just feel like talking just a little bit. And as I look at my life and, and I look at the lives of us now that have been saved and us that have prepared ourselves, that have gone through the crisis and gone through the pandemic and gone through a lot of other things, health issues, we've gone through that and God blessed us to survive it all. We need to make the necessary preparation yes. for the kingdom of God. Yes. And this is what the Bible says in the book of James in that second chapter. And James began to lay it out, even so faith in verse 17. If it have not worked, yes, it's good to be saved. Yes, it's good to have faith. But if our works is in a lack or in a deficit, we need to reexamine some things. Because God is now allowing us to prepare ourselves for expect his soon coming. If it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, but thou hast faith. I'm in verse 18, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Mm. So you got to do something. You got to be active. You got to occupy until he comes. Grace is great. It's good. 
Faith is good, it's great, but faith without works, without preparation, without expectation, is frustration. And we wonder why folks are frustrated and say, enough with this religious thing, enough with this church thing. I don't really have to go to church. I really don't have to do none of this stuff because Jesus already. <laughs> and the writer says, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believed and trembled. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. All right. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the Bible says that this was the righteousness of where God was revealed by faith through Abraham's and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was imputed or and counted unto him. I'm reading in the book of say of James, the second chapter, the twenty-third verse. It was accounted unto him or imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Isn't that a great accommodation to yeah. call God's friend? Yes. I used to think that all Abraham did was sit in the tent door. But Abraham exercised faith. He activated something in the kingdom of God by his demonstration of believing God that he was going to have a son in his old age. Uh -huh. So it took effort on his part. He could have not have cohabitated with Sarah. Say, I ain't even think about you, Sarah. We too old for that right, stuff. Right, right. Y'all excuse my English, but he uh -huh. said, well, God said, you said I'm going to have a son, so come on in, girl. <laughs> all right. And guess what? Nine months later, even Sarah thought it was a music. Oh, yes. Yes, she did. How am I, I'm already going to have a baby in my old age. I'm already past the problem of my age. Yes. But the angel says, because you laugh, you will have to name the baby Lot. And Isaac means Lot. And y'all know the end of the story. And Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot. And I'm going to make you, hallelujah, the father of many nations. And so shall I see thee. Because you believe God. A hundred years old. That's what they're talking about. Yes, sir. You see then how that by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise. Help me say likewise. Likewise. Also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Help me say, Lord, Lord, help me to prepare. Help me to prepare for your soon coming. We're standing. Yes. And I would admonish you today, and I know this wasn't a shouting message. That's all right. But y'all pray for me, pray with me that the Lord will use me in, in with the time that we have here on this planet. And we try to make our impact because we want folk to be saved. We want you to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Yes. Make the necessary preparation. Don't leave everything into God's hand. That's right. That's right. And expect it's going to turn out without any preparation on your part. All right. You do the groundwork. I look at this young lady right here now as I begin to, and I just start crying every time I talk and think about it because I say, look at the hospital. The many things that could have said, you didn't, don't do this. You got too much to go through in order yes. to get fresh your way through that. Yes. But she went through all of that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's because she had prepared herself. I want to be this. And in order to be this, I got to make some sacrifices. Oh my God. That's right. I got to tell some people no. I got to Burning yes, the sir. midnight oil. Mm. She's not the only one. There are many in our congregation that have done the same thing. Went through many times. The devil said, you ought to give it up. That's right, it's right. too hard. Your brain is cracking. Yes. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> so why are you spending? Blackboard closes at 12 minutes. It's 1137. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're not going to make it. <laughs> My God, my but God. you're prepared. You got to keep your eyes. Yes. That's how it's what it is you're trying to accomplish. Yes. Help look at somebody and say, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. God got work for you to do. You can do it. 
you can do it. I'm, I reach back into my community, to my 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 my, my uh, family, and I reach back into those persons that can help and assist me. I don't know everything, so I reach back into my circle of, of family, and I say, "Look, I need you to help me do this. I need you to help me do that. I need you to help me to do this." And it, and it helps me to continue. But I gotta prepare myself, yeah. and sometimes we gotta reuse outside sources. Yes. Yes. We gotta use people who God has placed around us and in our circle that can help and assist us. If you're feeling weak, I don't know who I'm talking to. If you feel like there are moments within the, this period that you've gone through that you feel like, what's the use of even trying? Yes. I want to encourage you today. You can make it. Yes. If you prepare yourself, exercise, activate your faith and put it to work. God will do it. He'll bring it to pass. We got witnesses. Do I have a witness in here today? God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. And you can just trust him. And I'm praying for you. Is there anyone that's listening to me, even through the Facebook, that's not saved, that have not totally surrendered, have totally given oh themselves God. up, and feel somewhat frustrated because I feel like I didn't make the necessary, I thought I had prepared, I was expecting a wife, I was expecting a husband. How does this happen if you don't prepare? And if you have not prepared, if you're not in the process of preparing for what it is that you're expecting, you might need to reevaluate. Your stance. What am I doing? Can't leave it all on God. What am I doing? Put your hands on yourself. Say, Lord, what am I doing? Lord, what am I doing? To prepare myself. What am, prepare what am, myself. What am I doing yes. Yes. that will cause me to reach that plateau? What am I doing that will cause me to reach my goal? If I'm not doing anything, then I might just be the problem. Mm. Because God is not the problem. He is not. You can have whatever you ask. Amen. Follow in my name, according to his will, the Bible says he'll yes. do it. Yes. And if it's your desire, I will not withhold any good thing from those that love him. And I believe you really love the Lord today. You that are listening to me by through Facebook, I believe there are many of you that really love it, but our expectation does not meet our preparation for what it is that we're asking God to do for us. So as Amos admonished the people, therefore, because you allowed these things to transpire, all these reminders that you have refused. Therefore, you got to prepare to meet your God. So we're preparing for the expectation of the kingdom of God to come, even in our day. And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, and whoever I'm talking to today, if you're not saved, lift those hands right now in the sanctuary. If you're at home or you're driving, don't lift your hands off the steering wheel, but in your mind and in your heart, surrender this morning to what God is speaking to you. And the Holy Ghost is moving upon the minds and the heart of people. Now, I know I didn't holler and scream this morning, but I hope that we've gotten out your attention enough to yes, know sir. that we have to prepare to meet God. Yes, what are we doing to prepare? Am I just like just sitting around, just taking each day as it comes and not preparing? Not putting in the necessary groundwork? How do you think these athletes and these professional people get to be where they are? In early ages, Tiger Woods, practicing to be a golfer at two years old. Yeah. And I can go down the list of Steph Curry's that are practicing on the court, spending the time and putting in the energy, putting in the motivation and the effort to be the best at their sport. Yeah. But guess what they did? They put hands. Yeah. He didn't just come out shooting threes. Yeah. He was in the court putting in the hour. The Kobe Bryant, he didn't just come out there with the, the, the work ethic like that. He had to do it on a continual basis. So I'm speaking to you now. Where yeah. they can do it yeah. on that natural, secular standpoint, what about you? Yeah. What about your work? What about your life? Hallelujah. For even our lives consists of not in the things by which we possess. Yes, but sir. what does it profit a man yes. to gain this whole world and lose your soul? We don't want to lose our soul because we have not properly prepared. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I've said what you told me to say. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. I did what you told yeah, me to do. Yeah. And God, somebody that's listening to me right now, come to a point of decision, come to a crossroad yeah, within their yeah. life, even in their spiritual walk with you, and they're going forward. God, we pray that you would touch their minds and heart right now. In the name of Jesus, we can't go back and undo the past, but God, we can move yeah. forward from this point on. Lord, here we are today. Lord, we need your help. We need your strength. We need your power upon our life. Help us today. Lord, help us. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. We need your help today. We need your power. We need your presence. Hallelujah. Stare us, Lord. Stare our minds. Stare our hearts. Stare us. In the name of 
name of Jesus. Don't let us rest content. Oh, God, don't let us be at ease in Zion, God. But help us, Lord, to be ready to go back with you when you come. Save and deliver as only you can. I know you're able, Jesus. Save our young people. Oh, God, don't let them get caught up in the fan fan and all the glitz and the glamour. But God, help us to prepare. God, help us to prepare. Help us to prepare. You've done so much for us. Hallelujah, God, and we praise you and we thank you for sparing us, God, through the crises that we've experienced and health issues that we've gone through. God, you gave us another chance, yes. and we're preparing you, to meet you, to go back with you when you come. Bless now this people in the name of Jesus. Save the unsaved, deliver the undelivered. Set free those that are bound. Stir the hearts and minds of those that have become complacent, those that have become at ease. God, we pray now that you would move and motivate the mind and the heart that we'll be about your business in this last day. In the name of Jesus, touch men and women everywhere. Oh, God, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. Use us as instruments of your will. And we'd be so thankful and so grateful to give your name the praise. These and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Everybody lift those hands right now. God, this me is me that stand in need of your help. It's me that stand in need of your help. You know my heart and you know my mind. Do it for your glory. Move as you only you can. And God will thank you for so doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give God a praise. Amen.